Did you know that AI can read your mind? Today I will be discussing this new paper, where researchers use stable diffusion to read your mind, to reconstruct images based on your brain activity. This is thrilling, right? You know, we used AI to decode brain way before stable diffusion. But now, with stable diffusion, we are able to take it to the whole new level. Stable diffusion is so-called generative AI. It's open source and it's able to generate stunning images just based on text prompts. In this paper, they trained stable diffusion additionally on thousands and thousands of brain scans. Basically, researchers showed thousands of images to humans, and while doing that, they logged their brain activity using fMRI scan. Afterwards, during the training, model learned the relationship between the patterns of brain activity and images which were shown to people. Here, above are images which were shown to human participants. And below there are images which are reconstructed by the algorithm based on the brain activity. Here is a teddy bear with a bow. Then from the brain waves, AI generated this image below. What's interesting, the position and the scale are fully matching. The only difference is the color of the bow. Now, how exactly they were able to do this? This is a combination of the latest research in neuroscience and latent diffusion models. So when, for example, I look at this photo, the temporal lobes get the information about what's on this image, which people or which objects are there. Whereas the occipital lobe will be getting the information about the layout, scale and the position of these objects. And then the models start to match those brain patterns to the brain patterns which it's seen during the training. And eventually stable diffusion draws a similar image. Most of the time the algorithm is quite successful, but not always. For example, here. It seems here algorithms struggle to recognize the clock tower and it's just drawn something abstract. That's probably because the model was not trained on a brain scan which corresponds to a pattern for a clock tower. But still, it did great, because eventually I'm able to recognize a clock tower here. In the future, to solve this problem, we need to train the stable diffusion on a larger data set of brain scans. Definitely, this work will create many new, great opportunities for neuroscience research. And this has many really mind-blowing applications. Applications like reading dreams, reading thoughts, memories, and eventually understanding how animals perceive this world based on their brain activity. And eventually we will create artificial systems which are able to comprehend this world just like we humans do. And all of this progress, all of this research will lead to one major step, to which I will come later in the video. Obviously, there are a lot of interest in reading our minds from different perspectives. So please take good care of yours and watch more of my videos. Here is one startup which I find super interesting. Their device looks just a regular pair of headphones. But this device measures brain activity, and inside it features EGG and MGG sensors, those small electrodes, which are collecting electrical signals produced by your brain. Basically, this device can read your thoughts and then translate these thoughts into text messages. Just imagine texting with the power of your mind. Super efficient. Do you know that already now we can move objects with the power of our mind. I know it sounds weird, but look at it. There is a French startup called NextMind. They've developed a headband. And if you wear this headband, you can control a computer or a AR VR headset with just your thoughts. It tracks your brain activity and you can push a virtual button just by focusing on it. This is actually a sort of telekinesis in digital world. <laughs> Just by looking at things and concentrating on them, I was able to interact with them, pick them up and throw them. 
And now we are in the key idea of this video, because all this progress shows that we are approaching a major revolution in the human machine interfaces. And that's in the way how we're gonna control our devices. You know, first we had a mouse and a keyboard, then touch screens, and now we control devices with our voice. The next hardware interface is gonna be controlling devices with our thoughts. I know it sounds insane, in reality it's much closer than you think. And companies like Meta and Microsoft are already preparing for this change. Meta is actually betting that the next hardware interface will be our thoughts. Just imagine, instead of typing your message or an email, you just can think it tough. Rather than touch a screen to move between windows, you can just move your hands in the air. Instead of drawing an image, you can just imagine it in every details. That's a new way of creating art. What is great? All of this is done using non-invasive BCI interfaces. Of course, there are invasive BCI interfaces, which can already read your thoughts quite precisely, but this requires drilling a hole in your head. So we want to avoid that by all the means. We are not able yet to read our mind so easily, but if we consider the speed at which neuroscience is developing and at which AI is developing, reading our mind doesn't seem out of reach. In case you're interested, I talk more about this in this video. And I have a Patreon where you can support my work and read some stuff. I will link it below. Thanks for watching, guys. I love you and I will see you in the next video.